All right, how's it going, everybody? I hope you are all doing amazing. This is going to be Nutrition Coach Q&A number three. So let's get into it. How many calories should I be eating? So here is a chart. Chart is pretty accurate. Um, give or take like 200 calories in either direction, you should be fine. So looking at this chart, the highest number happens if you are a young, active man. 21 to 30, very active, would be around 3,000 calories a day. And on the flip side of that, if you are a older 76 plus female who is not active, then you will be eating the least on this calorie list at around 1600 calories a day. So notice that number is almost half of what an active young man would do. And that's why it's important to really know your body and to know the habits that you do physically to determine what you need to be eating. If you wanna know specifically how much you should be eating, check out this video I made that goes through exactly what you need to eat down to the calorie and the macro. The next topic on this Q&A is about human water. Uh, we are mostly water and actually 50 to 70% of our total body mass is water. When you break down all of that water in the body, two thirds of it is intracellular fluid and one third is extracellular fluid. Going off of that, cellular fluid, Sodium maintains fluid volume outside of cells. Potassium maintains fluid volume inside of cells. And usually potassium is deficient in people. Hyponatremia is when your sodium level in your blood is low. And hypernatremia is when your sodium level is too high. Dehydrated for whatever reason, that will really hurt you over the long run. Um, hydration is really important. Okay, the next topic on this Q&A is going to be protein. Uh, protein I've talked about in a lot of other videos and people are still kind of confused about what the function of protein is because there are many different functions depending on which protein you're looking at. So I'm gonna go through some examples. Albumin, albumin oh. is a protein found in the bloodstream that helps draw water into the blood vessel from surrounding tissue. So this helps maintain your fluid balance. Collagen. Collagen is a protein that works with calcium to form bones, and it is influenced by vitamin C consumption. So having enough vitamin C helps your collagen levels. Enzymes. Enzymes are proteins that speed up biochemical reactions in the body and are integral to digestion. So enzymes are really important. If you're not sure if something is an enzyme or not, uh, they are identified by their suffix ACE. So catalase, anything that ends A-S-E, is an enzyme. Zonulin. Zonulin is the protein that regulates the integrity of tight junctions within the intestinal tract. So having zonulin is important for digestion and for maintaining the lining of your stomach. So those are four. There are way more proteins, but I hope that gives a better sense of what proteins actually do and why you need them in your body. Okay, the next question is about hormones and specifically like what do hormones do? There are a lot of hormones that have many, many different functions in preserving your body and keeping your body healthy. So I have a few on this card that I'm gonna go through. Thyroid hormones regulate metabolism and growth development. So sometimes if people have an issue with their thyroid gland, um, they end up smaller or they don't fully grow and hit puberty. Um, just some developmental issues, but your thyroid hormones are responsible for uh, growth and development. Cortisol is produced by the adrenal glands in response to stress. So the more cortisol you have in your body, the more stressed you are, more stress equals lower quality of health. And when cortisol levels increase, it quickly increases your blood glucose levels, your heart rate, and your blood pressure. And testosterone. Testosterone has a complex influence on metabolism and muscular development. When you are deficient in testosterone, it will increase your fat mass, increase your risk of developing diabetes, and increase your risk of developing heart disease. Hormones are really important, and I hope that helps clarify things. Okay, this is a fun question. It's not really a question, it's kind of just a card that I needed to include in this video. Um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, this is one of my favorite study cards when I was becoming a nutrition coach because it breaks down how should you prioritize the factors influencing your health and it really just kind of says that you should go from the base of the pyramid, the most basic thing to higher, smaller, less important things. It's important to have the base 
and the foundation before you can try to get the really hard goals. So you're not gonna work on the top before you are safe or fed. Like obviously the higher priorities are met first. And then when you meet those high priorities and you are confident that you don't need to worry about them anymore, then you can work on the bigger things. So for the nutrition aspects of life, uh, you can actually break that down the same way as Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I'm gonna show you. The first, so the bottom of the pyramid, is your daily energy needs. Basically how many calories you want. That needs to be the first thing you're looking at is how much should I be eating? And then you can break that down. The second part of the pyramid is the daily protein requirement. So once you know how many calories you have, you break that down and figure out how many of those calories each day should be protein. Protein is the next most important thing. After that, the third part of the pyramid is making your carb and fat amounts. So those are the three macronutrients. Notice protein is ahead of carbs and fat because protein is the most important macronutrient. It should be 20% protein, 50% carb, 30% fat. Play around with it based on your goals. I also have a video that talks about how you can figure that out, but in general, that's what you need to do. I laid this video out in order so that it goes off of this card. So it starts with calories and then water, which is also as important, and then protein, and then hormones and micronutrients. You wanna focus on the big things and address the big things before working on the little things. The fourth part of the pyramid is meeting your micronutrients. So micronutrients are really important, but they are not as important as the top three. And I really wanna stress that because People kind of talk about vitamin A and vitamin D, like if I get enough of it, I'll be healthy and I won't need to go to the gym or stop eating McDonald's every night. And it's just like meeting micronutrients is one of the least significant factors on this pyramid. It's one of the least influential. It's important to get to a healthy micronutrient level eventually, but don't focus on micronutrients before the big issues. And fifth is proper supplementation. Um, this is the least important part of the pyramid and I really wanna stress that because if you don't have a daily energy need, a protein requirement, any of that stuff mapped out beforehand, like supplements won't do anything for you. You supplement it with the training and with the diet that you already have. Go in order, calories first, then protein, then your other macronutrients, then the micronutrients, then supplements. If you can do the first three, I wouldn't even bother with the other two. You know, if you can do calories and macros, that's enough, I would say. And do not prioritize supplements and micros thinking that that will fix not doing the other three. Okay, last topic is wellness. Wellness can be broken up into six categories. So your wellness is influenced by your emotional, sense of self, your emotional well-being, your occupational self, your satisfaction of your career, your physical self, which is your body, your social, which are the relationships and your family, your intellectual, which is the mental stimulation, and spiritual, which is your feeling of purpose. Here's a quote I have. Wellness exists on a dynamic continuum, while health is a state of being either with or without chronic conditions. So health is something that should be good for periods of time and then not good for periods of time because everybody goes through some condition. But wellness is something that is constantly fluctuating because it involves your mental health, your emotional health, and your spiritual and social health. So wellness needs to be constantly monitored and checked on and uh, just addressed in, in your life. Appearances, this goes off wellness. Body reality are the measurable attributes that you are. Your height, your weight, your body fat percentage, the measurements surrounding your arms and your neck and your waist, like the circumference measurements, all of those are who you actually are as a body, as a person. Your body image is your perception of your body. Almost all the time, body image does not equal body reality. Nobody views themselves the way they are, unless you're a trainer or an athlete or somebody who is constantly monitoring their body and constantly seeing like the changes in their body. So pretty much everybody perceives their body 
incorrectly, it's important to address the reality of where you're at. And body ideal, what a person wishes their body should look like. And everybody, I would say, pretty much everybody has a body ideal different than their body reality. Um, it's kind of sad, but it's the truth. Everybody wants to be somewhere else with a body ideal. I want to have like super broad shoulders and a really thin waist and a really big butt and a really big chest. Think about the actual reality and the actual mechanics of what that would look like. And you might be a lot happier to realize that that isn't really realistic at all. It's pretty sad when everybody isn't as happy with their body as they should be. And I'm the same way. I have been in that place. Like when I first started training, I had goals based on body image entirely. I just wanted to look better. I just wanted to be stronger and feel better. Michael B. Jordan, Stephen Amell, Chris Evans. Like these were the guys that I idolized when I started and I looked up their stats, their height, their weight, their body fat. It's good because I now know like what is real and what isn't from them because a lot of the images I've seen from them are very misleading and they admit themselves that they don't always look like this, but they need to for the role. So by just being able to research that, I got a lot more comfortable with myself and my limitations and acknowledging that no one looks like them, even they don't look like them. So that shouldn't be a body ideal I am striving for because I'll never get there. And that just made me a lot happier to, you know, take that pressure off. I guarantee that most of you have stars with body images that are fake, supplemented through steroids, or you only idolize them because of the pictures and videos you've seen of them at their best, when they had makeup, when they had lighting, when they were fasted, like all of that stuff goes into it too. Like when I see people, I'm able to discern how long they've been working out roughly, whether or not they're taking supplements or steroids. When I do see someone who's real and who's put in the work and who is just really healthy, it inspires me to actually try to be like them. So really, I encourage you to do the same. I'm sure you have some body ideal in mind that you want. So actually take the time to look into what they did to get there. Orthorexia, I wanted to include this card very quickly. It is the fixation, disordered eating of only eating healthy foods. And this is something that is a really big problem. Like everybody thinks that anorexia and bulimia are the binge eating, the bad eating habits but being just as obsessed with getting healthy is as bad because any eating that influences your life and makes you less happy is a problem. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed. This was my third Nutrition Coach Q&A and I like doing this stuff a lot. It was fun and I will see you in the next one. So take care.